Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We are here today to talk the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare. Very different than gentlemanly warfare, Hayden. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> but ungentlemanly warfare, much more fun, especially on the big screen. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. You and I both went and saw like the early preview thing, which, by the way, um, I did not know this. But when you go mm -hmm. to those things, there's like no previews or anything prior. So it's like the damn thing starts when the when the time says it's going to start. So, you know. Oh, really? I, that wasn't the yeah. case for me. Yeah, there was we zero trailers. trailers or anything. It was like, no, no trailers. It just like launched right into the opening credits. It was fantastic. Love That's it. really cool. Um, although I do really like trailers, but I also don't love going on weekend like nights to movies because it's just too much like stuff yeah with how so, often we see movies at this point man yeah. I'm, get, I'm getting sick of certain trailers <laughs> right oh you're gonna get real sick of some by midsummer um Ugh. i think last Ugh. summer i think last summer i saw the haunted mansion trailer like eight six times maybe and i think i saw the um gran turismo one just as many times Oh, it's the fall guy for me right now. Oh, that but one, anyway, it's everywhere. <laughs> anyway, Ministry of Ungentlemanly <laughs> Warfare. The newest, it's, it's very much an ensemble cast. Um, mm -hmm. I think kind of like Expendables in World War II, except it's based on a real mission. Probably very loosely based, I imagine. I'm sure. But but it's fun. And, I, and also, like, spoiler alert, everybody, this far in, but it's not a huge spoiler. It's essentially a prequel to the James Bond franchise in many ways. So yeah. the character that Henry Cavill plays, uh, Gus March Phillips, is widely thought to be the, the person that Ian Fleming based James Bond on. And Ian Fleming, the person, is in this movie. Played, uh, I forget who played and Fleming in this my bad um we'll, we'll get there for sure <laughs> so Freddie Fox plays Ian Fleming so yeah but anyway this is a like secret mission they are trying to disrupt the German supply lines in the Atlantic and this is during the time in World War II where you know Britain is being bombed on, on an almost nightly basis and yeah. they're just barely hanging out the United States has not entered the war yet um, Britain is just trying to hang on at this point. And so British secret, uh, forces, um, go and engage in this, this mission that is completely off the books mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it just takes off from there. So give me initial thoughts. Like, what did you think when you left the theater? What were your first reactions? This is such a fun action movie. And I, I love the title, by the way. Just, Me too. just a quick aside, like the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is perfect. And I think it's very fitting because the whole tone of this in a very Guy Ritchie sense, right? Is that these guys are just like they're abs they're they're roughnecks, they're they're kind of like they're not like the heroic soldiers you're used to seeing in World War II movies, right? They're usually very valiant and very noble, and you've seen the story all the time of you know, some kid from Brooklyn or the Midwest or mm -hmm. whatever goes and becomes a hero, right? This is very much a movie about like essentially scoundrels, rogues, criminals yep. doing very scoundrel criminal things to the Nazis. <laughs> and it's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty satisfying. I also find that humor was done in this in a, brilliantly like violent way but in a way that's really effective and didn't take away from the mm -hmm. action at all for sure i think the, the movie is funny and funny in ways that you know you're you feel almost weird for laughing um but it's still like pretty great and uh i thought that this movie was cast like super well uh henry mm -hmm. cavill so i'll i'll be 100 percent honest and you know hate me in the comments or not but i've never been a huge henry cavill fan and this movie, I, I loved his performance. I really did. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like this is one of those things where it's almost like this is like the role he was born to play, mm -hmm. where it's just he embodies it so perfectly because he has such like a suave, charismatic charm to him 
but he's also pretty brutal and those two things contrast very well but it's it's a dichotomy not in the sense where it's like he'll be one one moment and one the next it's he's kind of both all the time all the time yep. yeah yeah he never loses that so so the the other primary cast member i want to call it right away before we get into the the meat of this is uh alan richson who uh fans of reacher know quite well but i thought this was a another just a fantastic performance by him in this mm-hmm. role and like this character he plays essentially like a psychopath killer that you know um fights for the good guys quote yeah. unquote but you know he uh he's nasty I, I, <laughs> he, he knows so many different ways to kill people and shows off many of them in this movie mm-hmm. but yeah, I thought that was great too and and fun. Um yeah. the opening sequence Hayden to this movie. I absolutely loved. And I don't know where what you thought about it, but it showed off the violence, the humor, all of it. Um a little bit of the spy stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh what what did you think? So in the, the just set it up in the opening sequence, they are stopped, they're on their ship, and we learn what all this is later. But they're stopped by a German like warship boarded and chaos ensues, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What, what did you think of all of that as an introduction? Oh, God, it was so good. Cause it really defines these characters super well. And it, cause I love that they're, they're doing their, their cover is that they're like Swedish people on like a fishing weekend fishing mm-hmm. trip basically. And that's why they're out in international waters. <laughs> Yeah, and obviously that that cover gets blown very quickly, and you have kind of like the very stereotypical Nazi villain that we've all kind of grown to hate over the yeah. years, right? Where it's the very prim and proper, very gentlemanly, but very serious. Like it's always just like some short little dude, <laughs> right? A lot of authority that he's trying to impose, and it's it it doesn't work on these guys because they just are not afraid of anybody and it's when they just burst out laughing hilarious. at him yeah like, that that yeah. moment was great that got that got a lot of laughter in my theater it, it did in mine too and i'll tell you like that's where i kind of that moment is where i sort of understood this what this movie was going to be um mm-hmm. i love movies like this that don't take themselves too seriously and it was very clear from the beginning that this is what we were getting here um was a movie yeah. that just knows what it is and is going to lean really, really hard into that for two hours straight. For sure. And I thought, you know, just outstanding. Um, We, we get, uh, then we get, we, we go back in time a little bit to the beginning of this mission and how uh, Gus Marshall Phillips is chosen and why, um, why this mission has to be off the books, Mm -hmm. how his team is put together and all of that leading and then we see kind of the mission play out um that scene is is so great by the way just real quick that intro for his character where you see like he's getting as he's getting the briefing he's kind of like looking around and noticing like you know that they've set out all this nice alcohol for him and this box Mm -hmm. of cigars you know the the kind of thing you'd have in like a very formal high-ranking military um conference essentially right and or meeting and he's just like can i have one of these like he, he doesn't say he just gestures mm-hmm. to it and he's like cool thanks and then he takes like five of the cigars he just keeps stuffing the cigar yeah and pocket. it's it's not all at once it's like every mm-hmm. couple seconds he'll do another one where he'll reach for <laughs> one and put it in the pocket where it's he's being kind of sly about it but he's being coy like he knows he's being seen and he knows he's not supposed yep. to do it but he also knows that these people need him and that's kind of a dynamic that he plays for the rest of the film Absolutely. And including like when he leaves that room and goes outside and offers like the cigar to one of the troops and it's like, Oh, why not? And then he pulls it back and laughs at him and walks away. Yeah. I forgot like, about that moment until mm-hmm. right now. Just even thinking yeah. about it, give me a laugh. Mm-hmm. It, the humor is just really well executed, but it, then at the same time, this movie turns very violent at other, at other points. Um, mm-hmm. When they go on this, in this mission, they have to stop and pick up, one of their uh, comrades who is being held in a like German camp or not camp, but um, I don't know what we're calling it is like a base basically that. He's yeah. Just it, it's ju- it's yeah. just some military outpost that he's yeah. being held as a POW in. 
Yep. Uh, Jeffrey Appleyard is the character's name. Um, and so we, we meet that character and <laughs> like you see them come up and he's and the whole fight scene takes place where they're rescuing him, like right in front of him. He's still like chained up to this thing with like the, the battery, the, um, clamps like on, on his nipples, right. He's bleeding oh, through geez, the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> they this whole fight takes place and uh they're like what happened to your nipples and they finally like do you mind taking this off the battery's still on right now like so the yeah. whole time it was running and torturing him but he just sat there like whatever um, yeah it's it's ridiculous but i love it because i think there's mm -hmm. like world war ii obviously is a very heavy subject to go into because yeah. of a lot of actual history and a lot of people who are being oppressed. Right. And they do get into that a bit more than I thought they would. And I think they do that with, with taste, but they also kind of find the levity in these moments, right. Where it's like, I feel like anytime there's a combat scene, like we talked about it with monkey man, where it, it feels like a dance, right. Where it's very mm -hmm. rhythmic and um, free flowing. I feel like, whenever there's a fight scene in this, especially when it's the whole ensemble together, it feels like they're just like playing. <laughs> like yes. they're just having fun. They're just kind they're of the time the of place. their lives. They are. Yep. And, and they do progress that scene. I, that sequence where they, where they get Applegate out of the base, I think is my favorite in the movie because it almost kind of plays to me like a far cry base clearing. Oh yeah. A little bit. Where you start with the stealth, the 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 guy who you said is he's Jack Reacher, right? That yep. actor. Yep. Yeah, he's he's taken out like twelve people with bow and arrows or whatever, just kind of sniping oh, yeah. all the guards, and then and like oh, he is nuts with that bow and arrow. Like he was placing it in places that I had never thought about as as being lethal or incapacitating, <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> yeah. he's like if legolas was built like a tank and yeah. could just like kill people with his bare hands you know like that is yeah. what this character is yeah i love that sequence as well um i mean it's guy Ritchie, so it's a guy Ritchie movie through and through i mm -hmm. think um i don't know are, are you a big guy Ritchie person because i am like not at the same level as like tarantino or some yeah. of my absolute favorites but definitely a guy Ritchie fan so my dad is, so I saw a lot of clips when I was younger, but a lot of those movies are obviously very inappropriate or just sure. awkward to watch with your children. Mm -hmm. So I've seen like almost like a highlight reel, right? Of a lot of the best mm -hmm. scenes from Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels and those kind of movies. But I've never seen a full Guy Ritchie film like cover to cover, so to speak, until this one. And this definitely has me excited to go and do more and I, I think it's it's interesting as a setting for him too because i think his films usually are set within the present moment right i don't think he's done a lot of period pieces you can correct mm -hmm. me if i'm wrong there but i i think you're right yeah. yeah and it's it's interesting to get this movie because i feel like it's very um it's very inglorious bastards to me almost oh yeah where it's like if you were to take like the, on the ways you can cover World War II, right? If you take like Saving Private Ryan and Inglorious Bastards on a spectrum, right? I think this movie's like just over halfway <laughs> towards the Inglorious Bastards route. This movie to me is if Inglorious Bastards and The Expendables had a baby. That's yeah. what this movie is. Um, so, what did you think about the choice of like how to tackle this? Because I mean, obviously it's a serious mission and a desperate mission, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, yeah. if this doesn't work, the United States might never enter the war. Britain might lose. And you know, it, it, the whole world could look very different. Right. And that's real history. For sure. Um, yeah. This could have been tackled in a very serious way. Mm -hmm. what do you think about the, the choice to go after it with more, a little more tongue in cheek, um, still being serious, but also really bringing the humor to the forefront. I didn't think the tone would work for me, but it so did. Um, I usually prefer my World War II stuff more grounded, right? Like for our Save for our game Ryan type stuff. Yeah, like for our gamers in the audience, I'm Call of Duty World at War before I'm Call of Duty Vanguard, right? And I know you're sure exactly the I opposite like spectrum there. Well, I like both. Yeah, though. yeah, fair enough. So, but I think though it's it's important to keep these stories alive, right? Because like to mm -hmm. get real and serious for a second, like. 
we're reaching a time where like the extinction of veterans of this era is really imminent, right? I mean, the youngest these guys can be is in their mid nineties. The final surviving U S soldier from the Pearl Harbor attack just passed away. So yeah, you're, yeah. Um, it is, you're, you're absolutely spot on. And I think we're to the point now where enough generations have passed that there's a lot of forgetting happening about For sure. what was at stake during that conflict. Mm-hmm. I do feel like Richie and the, the cast and the story does justice to that. Like they don't mm-hmm. make a mockery of it. For sure. Like they're very respectful of it. But at the same time, bringing some levity to it in a way that's super violent. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, in in my opinion, true to these characters. Like, it just feels right yeah. for who they are. Like you said, they're all scoundrels, right? And they act right. like scoundrels. At least Going in this in, version, I'm I'm sure yeah. I'd be interested to because it's it's based on a it's based on a book which is based on documents that were declassified in 2016. Yep. Which is fairly recent history if you think about it relative to yep. how long ago the war is, right? So I, I think it it puts an interesting fresh newer perspective that i think but i think it still does its justice to these characters and to these people because you see at the end real pictures of photographs of them and they kind of talk about what they did in the war and if they won any medals which of course all of them did (laughs) and what they went on to do with their lives after and like you know we'll we get one spoiler category we'll talk about how it deals with like like the holocaust is addressed right it's talked about and i i think it's such a hard line to walk with this movie like it's one of those things where i just i feel like it's much greater than the sum of its parts where i feel like i agree this movie shouldn't work as well as it does and i think it just takes all of the pieces that are there you get a good script you have a great director and you have a cast that has really great chemistry like i i believe these people as as friends, right? Or as comrades, at least, because there's, you know, obviously there's clear differences and stuff and headbutting where it's over certain things where these personalities might not necessarily mesh outside of the war zone, but I think they do a great job of like, I, I cared about all these characters, right? I liked them. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, the larger stakes of the world and you know what's at stake and what the world could have been like if this didn't happen. But you also have the history of, of knowing what's going to happen right you know that this mission is going to be a success because like we're not speaking german yeah. right now right, right. like yeah so but I how think... they got there was different mm-hmm. right like for sure what they had to do at the end was different i guess let's jump into spoiler territory here um so first of all give me uh carrie ells is m over ralph fines any day no disrespect to ralph fines in the new bond movies but i am definitely on on team carrie ells there as as m in this movie Fair enough um even though uh ralph finds i think nephew plays hazy henry hayes in this movie oh, um, really? yeah uh Her- hero finds tiffin is that gotcha. character so yep um so he's the irish like captain sailor right um mm-hmm. who is also great uh just great casting throughout this movie but yeah so sure. let's let's jump in this mission was originally to go destroy these ships that contain all of these supplies right that keep the german supply line alive mm-hmm. and specifically the u-boats so it, it had yeah. everything needed to repair them fuel them it's these massive ships that are docked in this island in i think the mediterranean right oh no it's in africa it's a, it's okay. on the coast of africa but oh, it's, it's right yep um spanish controlled it's like the one part of the one island that's like spanish controlled Okay. There. Gotcha. Not German controlled. So anyway, um, they learned that these ships have all been reinforced. This ship has been reinforced. So they're not going to be able to destroy it. They can't sink it. So like on the fly, they just decide, ah, shit, why not? Let's steal it. <laughs> you know? I mean, they're yeah. like all of a sudden it turns into a heist. At which point the score in this movie becomes outstanding in my opinion oh yeah i mean i thought it was great before but it definitely ramps up here and it it's fitting because now knowing that like i think the movie had the tone of a heist movie yep the whole time right and i i think 
it has some of the flaws of a heist movie too because the pro like because i think the second act is i wouldn't say weak but it's definitely comparably slower right you get yeah. a really great on like in, assembling the ensemble crew in the beginning you get an incredible what basically 30 40 minute uninterrupted action sequence for the finale but then the, the middle yeah. is very I it's a lot slower too. it has to set all the pieces up right so. Yeah, and Act 2, throughout Act 2, like, this primary cast of characters, they're all on the ship. They're still sailing. Yeah. So it's right. very focused on, like, their, um, like, teammates, so to speak, who are yeah. already at this this uh, port setting yes. up, you know, everything going on there. Yeah, and Mr. Heron they... and Marjorie Stewart yep. are the two characters yep. who is, like, a the mr heron's this guy who's he runs a casino there basically where mm -hmm. he he has he kind of gets information he's valuable information because he runs a casino that gets a lot of officers of like all of the major <laughs> access powers drunk and mm -hmm. gets them talking saying stuff they shouldn't right and then marjorie is kind of there as like your i don't want to say stereotypical but she fits that kind of like seductress role where like her her She's job like is to, Widow. yeah. Her job is to be all sexy and get close to the Nazi guy and the, the head Nazi guy. Take right? him out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Who is? But I did love her in this dude. movie. She's great. Oh, she's great. Nazi guy, creepy dude. The character of Heinrich Luer. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he uh, enjoys torturing people for fun. That's his. That's his relaxing, you know, um, activity. So. Yeah. There are you you alluded to some scenes and the, and they really did take place a lot in Act Two here. There's one in particular where the Holocaust gets addressed. There are serious themes in this movie that get dealt with, for sure. So there's a great scene where they're kind of like sitting down, lunch together, whatever, where mm -hmm. he starts talking about you know Jews and then she like tells him basically that she is one but then he's yeah. like are you kidding or not and there's this whole tension you know yeah um before she like says oh no they're like filthy whatever right yeah she's like, um, of course i'm kidding they're the worst yeah yeah and she's because she's kind of she gets it in as her moment to stick up for her people yep. but to also not blow her cover and it's it's super tense because you can't like because the stakes there are very very real right and it's you don't know what's going to happen to this character and at that point i had already like i had grown quite fond of her right i thought she was yeah really great and just a really funny charming person that can has proved herself to hold her own right and that's because this is a time when women weren't really serving in active combat roles and even though right. hers is more quote-unquote espionage like she is capable of getting her hands dirty and is a very good shot with all sorts of weapons. So I thought, yeah, I thought it was a great scene because it showed how quickly this German officer can flip the switch from being sort of flirty and whatever to immediately just like, are you, because then you must die essentially. Right. Like it, yeah. the switch gets flipped and it's like, you, you understand the seriousness of this uh, mm -hmm. pretty quickly. And then that in the third act proceeds when, he discovers that she actually is Jewish and then that whole thing begins and he just goes into like essentially rage, right? Like, yeah, all of that. And um, that switch flips there even yep. more viciously than it does here. Right. Where he goes from at that point, like he's got feelings for her to some extent, right? That yep. the seduction has been working and yeah. he's trying to get her out of the party. And then he realizes in a moment, cause she, she's singing a song and, to the crowd and she slips up and says the yiddish version the, uh, one of the lines in the song is different in the yiddish version version versus the german version and he catches mm -hmm. it and it's this instant switch is flipped where he just is he goes His into face. yeah yeah and i i think that actor portrays really well like because a lot of times with historical mm -hmm. fiction right you're taking scenarios that maybe all of these people didn't actually do all these things but they're all representative of a larger idea and I think this actor does a really good job of showing like the outward pomp and circumstance and flashiness of the Nazi party versus just the true vicious 
reprehensible hatred of what they were actually doing behind all the parades and pageantry and it's it's terrifying frankly mm -hmm. it is and then you know as all that is happening we're essentially the heist is totally underway right mm -hmm. and we're we're seeing the plan um executed on shore and on the boat um to essentially steal these tugboats and steal this massive ship that has all these supplies um how they kind of pinned the german soldiers they lured them in with a with a, like a beer fest party and then the officers yeah. with the costume party <laughs> so and then they lock the soldiers inside and you know they eventually get out but they're locked in for for a minute um while this is all happening so we see like the, the little skirmishes as they take over these boats right the tugboats etc and like i said earlier the score here just the rhythm of it like the the beating taking place and then when the action really ramps up it gets really loud right and mm -hmm. then it goes back to sort of a soft and yeah. it, it it's very heist music like you know as a score but it also has that like tension behind it yeah real a really good choice and i thought it added quite a bit to this you know third act it's it's very period though too because i think a lot of times when you have movies that are not going to be super accurate sometimes they use more modern music right where a lot of period pieces will throw hip-hop or rock in there if they're not really trying super seriously to be a, a period piece but this one is just like the soundtrack is all very like jazzy big band kind mm -hmm. of music that appropriately swells and dips and it's it's got this whole like that we're even talking about it's like i feel like throughout the whole movie like you have like the the like the classic like brushing of the drum set going on and it just yeah. like it's it's so perfect because it puts you it puts you in that place i feel like sonically mm -hmm. so yep um and you had mentioned earlier it is almost like a dance right like it's you know um some of the of the scenes and especially like monkey man was and this one has a little bit to that too it's just different um but i thought the score added to that here so what what did you think of the actual heist like getting away was it that was the only part where I felt it like it might be a little like anticlimactic, but I get it. Like it's, you yeah. know, I still thought it was fun and just a great time. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of goofy though. I like, I enjoyed it, but I think the finale is what required the most suspension of disbelief for me. Right. Cause it's, we talk, we talk a lot about the monkey man reviewed by Dak Press and how that's a movie where you really feel like someone's fighting for their life. Cause you, you see them miss punches and you see, you see him get hurt and you see him fall. And like, this is very much not the case here. Right. It's their, right. they're, it's, they're almost like they're playing a call of duty mission on the easiest difficulty. Oh, totally, where they're just yeah. having hordes of guys running at them and they're mowing them down. And there's a lot of like moments where like Henry Cavill's walking in that like giant coat with the tails that he's been trying to get all movie. And he's just hip firing the SMG taken out. Mm -hmm. Like, six groups of guys in a row and it's just it's it's ridiculous but it's like i mean i don't know like i i feel like <laughs> any movie that has nazis as the villain i can suspend any of that because it's just so fun yeah. to watch them get their shit rocked oh totally um you know and you know like movies like indiana jones where that's the case like it's not mm -hmm. based on any actual event right so you can do a lot there and have fun with it um yeah this one is but i think like we said it's still handled tastefully enough mm -hmm. where you can really have that fun with it because you're right like henry cavill's character especially is like doing trick shots with the gun you know basically he's <laughs> like lifting up the leg putting the gun under the leg and like headshotting the dude you know let's they walk and, yeah um but uh it still feels like i don't know that they have respect for the people involved because these are real people that these characters yeah. are based on um and it, it celebrates them it celebrates that what they accomplished in this mission so i i find it to be fun yeah i i think it works and i think you can do that with a lesser known event like this right because it's already yeah like like you couldn't do this like the battle of the bulge <laughs> no or the fall of berlin yeah. or something but with this right. very small scale very personal mission i think that works i was gonna i wanted to ask you out we've talked a lot about the characters and ensemble who we follow in action the majority of the time but there's also a lot of like bureaucratic stuff we see going on right where we see churchill getting the pieces in order to have this mission and calling 
these guys are calling their like handler, I guess, so to speak, right. To kind of get the ball in motion here and trying to orchestrate this and coordinate this and supervise this all trying to be under the cover of parliament. What did you think of that part of the movie? Like, did it work for you? Did you enjoy that portrayal of Churchill or what'd you think? I don't know if I enjoyed the portrayal of Churchill so much there. Um, but like, I think for the tone of what this movie was, it was fine. Um, yeah, I did very much like Cariel's performance as M though. I, I thought that was great. Um, I thought the like push and pull that the warring factions within the British government, that's very true to real life yeah. of what happened at that point in the war. Like there was a large segment of British politicians that wanted to negotiate peace with Hitler and basically yeah. surrender. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a scene and, where all of his top people, generals and yep, everyone comes at him. Like there's a group of what, four or five guys. And they all are like, this is why we need to negotiate peace. And essentially mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to couch in a very, they're trying to say, this is why we need to surrender without using the, the big scary S word. The, the S word. And, yep. And Churchill's not having any of it, which I, so, I love. And there's, and if you want a more serious take on this, there's a couple of really excellent movies from the last like 10 plus years that kind of handle this. There's the King's Speech, which either one best picture was a finalist for it. Um, I think it won it. It might have won it. And then there's uh, what the Darkest Hour is that what it's called? From yeah, the, that's the one ago? where Gary Oldman plays Churchill, right? Yeah, 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 which is incredible. And but that's that's not really the performance. That's not the note they're going for here. Like no. Churchill is very much he's he's very much just a kind of a bombastic, loud mouthed. You know, he's he's the one who's making the tough calls, but he's doing it in spite of everybody around him. Like he's not really interested in the bureaucracy or getting people on his side. You know, they're like, we shouldn't do this. And he's like, well, I'm the prime minister and I want to do it. So we're going to do it. Yeah. So I do <laughs> feel like that part of him is preserved pretty well here. Um, I think yeah. the biggest difference, though, is that in this movie, he's super, very, very much a supporting character. And in those other two I just mentioned, he is the the character. character. Yeah. So he is there to kind of move some of the drama along and some of the tension behind mm -hmm. the scenes, which I think he does quite well. So um, I do think they they represented the the like split within the bureaucracy um, over what to do and the fact that there was somebody like right underneath M. Um, and Fleming, who was willing to basically tell Churchill's enemies what's happening so they can try to, you know, stop it. Yeah. And all those things happening, I think, yeah, I mean, that's all true to life of what was happening at that time. So I liked it. I think I think if there had been more of it, Hayden, I would have not liked it as much. I think they hit yeah. the right amount. It was there to provide a little background tension, but it, it should not have been anywhere near the primary focus of the story. Yeah, because I feel like it's low double digit screen time if you like yeah. maybe 20 minutes tops. And I if that, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think this movie does for the most part a pretty good job of pacing of the action versus the character stuff, right? Because this is because mm -hmm. this is an action movie, but I feel like it's also a movie that has that ex it explores those characters a lot more than I would have thought. Yeah. Um, I think especially the people that get to the Island first, right. That are already there mm -hmm. with Heron and um, Marjorie. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm glad it, I did that. Cause by the time you did the finale, it's, you know, you're invested in these people and that's where the stakes come from caring about them rather than. Yep stakes in the plot because you you know what's going to happen because you've it's it's history of the world you live in right at least right mostly <laughs> for the most part yeah but Partially. we know who wins <laughs> yeah. but we don't for know sure. who lives unless you've read the book which i haven't yeah but kind of want to now so i don't know um sam i'm thinking about it for sure so anyway let's put a score on this thing and get out of here so i i rather enjoyed myself with this is this the best movie i've seen this year or will see this year no <clears throat> But I don't think it's meant to be that. Like this isn't a this isn't a like for your consideration Oscars, you know, best picture movie. <laughs> right. This is a like go have a freaking good time, laugh and enjoy some good action type of movie. And it does yeah. that. So it's a fun date night blockbuster, or I feel like I <laughs> I think it's like the ultimate dad movie. 
You know what I mean? Like it's very much it feels very much the kind of movie that I would like watch at home on streaming or whatever with my folks when I'm back Mm -hmm. from the holidays. Maybe with a drink or two. So and dads will laugh during this for sure. Oh, dads are gonna love this movie. I don't know if you need to rush out to theaters to see it, but it's it's definitely worth a watch, even if it's not really yeah. 100 in your real house i'm big on like seeing action movies that rely on sound a lot in theaters um True that and i feel like this one benefits from that so sure like mm-hmm. and i'm i think it's good and it's fun so go support it in theaters like do yeah. it um but uh yeah i mean for what it's trying to be this movie does well so we're going seven and a half on this thing um it is like i said i mean i don't think either one of us would would rank it the best thing we've seen this year no. But, but it's pretty damn fun. It's really good. It's 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 yeah. just a great time at the movies, right? It's really fun mm-hmm. and it's got some it's got some great set pieces that I think I'll definitely want to rewatch once this movie's on digital oh, yeah. too. Yep. So it's it's got its merit for sure. Great. It's just a good time at the movies. And sometimes that's all the movie mm-hmm. needs to be. And I'll you know. tell you this the, the movies that we would I think both put much higher or at least higher than this, right? Um mm-hmm. this year are much more heavy watch and yeah. are probably less. I mean, they're not, not rewatchable, but this is an easier sell to me to just be like, Oh yeah, let's put this on and watch it. Yeah, you know? Um, for sure. So yeah, but overall good time, go see it. Like it's fun. You'll enjoy the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare, a great title, a very Tarantino esque title, which it know, is for a somewhat Tarantino esque movie. <laughs> oh, totally. Too. Yeah. yeah, like I said, if the idea of the Expendables and Inglorious Bastards meshing into one sounds fun to you, go check out this movie. Okay, sure. we will have more uh, movie reviews to come, so stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you subscribe to it, like this video. We'd really appreciate that. And sure. yeah, until next time, enjoy whatever you're watching. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.